Kyle wanted to know, uh, given how she escaped several times before, how do you feel about Nirti's ultimate fate? It's pretty fitting. Yeah, it is. It's fitting, but I, I would have loved to be able to activate my rings and disappear before that happened and go somewhere else and then come back and wreak lots more havoc. I just yeah. I wanted to keep coming back. I, I felt like I had so much more to do, which I'm sure would be exactly Nirti's thought process. She would feel like it's too soon. Yeah. <laughs> too close, you know? So yeah, so fitting, but as an actor, man, I wanted to do more. And as a character, Nirti had lots to do yet. So so you, you contributed to Metamorphosis. What, uh, Kevin Leach, what inspired you uh, to add the DNA machine and, and do those other components to that, uh, to that contribution to that story? Well, at the time I was, I think I was teaching screenwriting at Vancouver Film School and I was working a lot as a story editor where you, you work as, you kind of advise on flaws or things that have to be addressed in screenplays. So I was working production companies and government agencies to do that. And I was, I was ready to start generating some of my own um, scripts or more of my own scripts. And so I had been asked to pitch actually to Andromeda, to Alan Eastman. Oh. So I had developed this whole pitch that included this DNA machine and it didn't go anywhere with Andromeda. So then one day um, I just said to Brad, we, we decided we were gonna have lunch. And I said, you know, I have an idea. I'd like to kind of run it by you. And so we ha have a nice lunch and I tell him this whole concept of this DNA machine and there were more to it, obviously. And he said, you know, that's interesting. Let me just take that into the room and see what happens. And as these things go, it takes time, you know, so it was kind of thrown into the pot, like th certain moments or concepts, that one stuck. Mm. And so it kind of gelled with another idea that was already developing. So they decided to integrate it. And so Brad called me and said, you're gonna have a, a story credit. I was super excited. Of course, I wanted to write the whole script, but James- Of course. Yeah, you know, but anyway, it was James's time to, to do that. Yeah. And so well, it's, you're the villain. You're, you're, it's your story for all intents and purposes. Yeah, but I hadn't pitched that it was near T's machine. So that was interesting. I personally am interested in, um, quantum physics and biomechanics. And I'm just interested in science as a human being. Um, even though, to be honest, I haven't watched a whole ton of sci-fi weirdly, but I love thinking about it in the real world. So it, I was just so fascinated and the whole concept, the visuals of, of the way DNA looks and functions. I, I just felt it was so, it could be so mechanical and so interesting, almost like a, a place you can go into. And so that was just, it was, it was the idea of it. It was the concept and it was the visual appeal of it too, that was kind of in the, uh, in the pitch. And then of course it made perfect sense for near made perfect sense for her. Yeah, to be able to alter people's genes on the fly. So the end product that we saw, saw, was that pretty close to what you had in mind? Well, yes and no. The fact that, you know, when you see Amanda, for example, and she's, she's standing on a platform and the DNA is going around her, yes. But my original visual was more of the person almost like climbing the stairs of the DNA. Of the helix. Yeah. Wow. yeah, I may still use that somewhere else. Yeah, that is to <laughs> that is totally legit. Wow, very cool. Um, uh, Claire Burr, what is your favorite um, prop that you got to use uh, in the show? There were there were a couple that you got to use. Yeah, there were some cool ones. The healing device I, was cool. Yeah, I like the healing device. That that I would say that was my favorite. That was my favorite, and kind of, you know. When I, when I actually did do the healing on Cassandra and I had that second device, I don't know what that one was called. Do you know what that spider one was called? Uh, I, I, they reused it again a few years later. I actually, right um, right here is uh, one of your devices as well. Hey. Now that I now that I realized it. So yeah, I've got a little near T in my back behind it. It didn't even occur, occur to me until now. So yeah, but it didn't have technically a name. Right, just, right. just the healing okay. device did. Those two, those two devices that I used in concert when I was working with Cassandra, 
that was really cool. And I'm, I'm actually interested in healing, in metaphysical healing. So it, uh, that was kind of just, it worked for me. I could imagine your energy kind of using, going through these devices, magnifying the, the technology and the technology using your energy to function. That made sense to me. So I really enjoyed those. Very cool. Yeah, that I think that there is more... I don't think that pills solve everything. I think that there's more going on. The EM spectrum is pretty huge. We're tied into some more stuff than I think that we realize yet. And so that that aspect of Stargate always uh, lent credence to that idea that there's there there. I suspect there may be a, a a real thing like 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 energy transference to heal. Yeah, I like things like that. Do you think, uh, Zader, do you think part of Nirti's success as a villain was because unlike other gold, she relied almost entirely on um, uh, her own knowledge, uh, her own power and her own subterfuge? Yes, 100%. As soon as that question started, I was like, yep, she is, she's working from the inside out. It's her elevated intelligence and her capacity to create new technology, to picture what's possible, and then to actually have the brilliance to execute and to create technological supports to, to make that happen, to create the result. Even though obviously she tried, she failed, she tried, she failed, she kept working, but nobody else was able to, to use some of the technology that she had. There were no other golds running around with the invisibility, capacity you know only one hathor but oh, she was knocked off early on and that but that was it no one, no one else had it right i think they may have been in cahoots for a little bit yeah i'd like to see a little bit of hathor near t kind of thing happen <laughs> <laughs> who knows we could be we could do some damage together i think <laughs> absolutely sue ann's uh, show hathor host i think you were on it yes i was isn't I she was. terrific so good so good like what a what a ray of light like she's so talented she is she's so charismatic she's so fun generous and then to put that show together at a time when it could really just bring a bit of light to people and and just having the kind of personality that she does that she can appeal to you know her fellow performers who just want to share i just really i my hat's off to her and i i had a a an Instagram account that I really wasn't using. Mm. So I actually should give you guys my accounts because I, I would like to. Absolutely, start. we'll promote. Yeah, so so for Hathor Hosts, I kind of reactivated my Instagram account. So that one is at J-E Samuda, all small letters. J-E-S-A-M-U-D-A. -E and then Twitter is at J Samuda, but the J and the S are both accounts. And I want to up my my game now that we're doing more from home. Absolutely, this is this is our theater now, so this is what we've got. Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel, or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side. <laughs>